What's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC, inside the 100,000 pound five axis Ibarmia. And we are setting this baby up to hold this 1,600 pound beast piece of 4140 steel. And I'm excited because we actually got you guys out there involved in a contest to help guess how we were gonna actually fixture this material. Now, one of the cool things about fixturing is there's a million different ways. And based on your experience, based on what you can comprehend and how your mind works and just all the different things that you've seen in industry, everybody's gonna have a different thought process. Process. So as you can see, the cat is out of the bag and you can see exactly what we did, okay? Now the winner who guessed what we were gonna do is actually getting this Mastercam swag bag. Not only this awesome swag bag from Mastercam, it's gonna have Titan apparel, different swag from different partners, filling it up. Now, as mentioned in the description on Saturday's video, we're actually holding this part up and we're actually cutting five sides of it. So how do you take a round piece of material that is 1,600 pounds and fixture it in a way that you can cut the surface, cut around it, flip it, come under it, come over it, and all of it. Now, the answer is kind of multifaceted because you see we have put dovetails into the round material. But to put the dovetails in, we had to fixture the material to the table. Now, when you look at it, it looks fairly simple. And that is the exact point, because in the video, I said we're not doing production, it's one huge piece, we're doing a one-off. How can we efficiently fixture this material without spending a lot of money? Now this is where it gets exciting, because out of those 950 comments, we chose eight comments that we wanted to mention. Now again, there is a ton of comments, there's a ton of good information. Some people needed prints to put more stuff, but other people looked at it and they said, hey, that's a massive piece of round material that's going on a mill. There's no flats on it, so let's actually take the material and put it on B blocks. And in the same breath, you have a round piece of material, you don't have any flats on it, so how can you actually hold it? So let's go to dovetails so it actually anchors. So a lot of people mentioned dovetails and a lot of people mentioned B blocks. And I wanna give a shout out to some of these people, okay? So just very quickly, and, I, and excuse me if I mess up the name. So we got Carter Sheets, we got Kelly Pearson, Johannes Grozinger, we got Hendra One, we got John Roach, we got Apostle Robert, and we have Brian Rydbaum. Boom. Serious solutions to our problems, and each one of them was amazing. Now, the one that our team chose took it a little bit further. And in the first sentence, he captured my heart right there because I was like, I love the attitude here. So the winner of the contest, who's gonna get this backpack full of swag from Titans of CNC, -da 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 -da, Johannes Grozinger, boom, you won the prize, thank you so much. And let me just show you this answer right here. First thing that I like, as a machine shop owner, I look at it and the first sentence hits me. There is actually a very easy way if you don't have a lot of stuff laying around. So no pressure, it's 1,600 pounds, it has a bunch of weight, the weight's already gonna hold it down, so we're not stressed about it. We just have to make it so it's stable and rigid and it doesn't roll. The weight itself makes it rigid, so B-blocks makes perfect sense. So then he goes on and he actually explains this piece. Take a piece of aluminum and machine a half round shape from the monster piece and drill the two sides the exact distance from the threads from the tombstone. When you fixture it with two spacers, I assume they're talking about the V blocks and long threaded rods, you can hold it easily 
with a strap from the forklift without ruining it. When you close the nuts, it'll bring massive power between the two fixturing radiuses on both sides. I love that right there because when you truly look at fixturing, it's all about taking the material and shaping the fixturing material to the material that you're gonna hold so you have a perfect fit. So basically what we've done is we've taken just a simple bar stock and we've made it a clamp. If we took just a normal bar stock, it would be flat and only at one point, because this is round and it's flat, it would only be touching in one point. So what we did was Barry took the material, put it up in the four vices, and he made a program to cut a seven inch radius into the connecting surface of the material. So the bottom of the material is the perfect radius to the material so it fits perfectly like it's a hat and then we drilled two holes travis took some 316 stainless and actually made these threaded rods right here nice and rigid then we put t-nuts or anchors down in the t-nut slots boom threaded it in and then put a knot up here and as you tightened it boom boom you came down it put pressure on both sides right on top of the B blocks, boom. And that amount of pressure with the weight of the material is all we needed to mill flats and a 3 8 wide dovetail. Now the dovetail is like the T-slot where the dovetail in the material has a jaw with the matching dovetail and that baby fits perfectly right there. When you have four vices and eight jaws and you clamp in, there's no way that it can pull out. It would literally have to compromise the steel jaws and rip the steel based on the weight. But we did safety checks. We did an analysis, looked at the weight to make sure that when we clamped that baby in, there was no way that it could tip, it could fall out or anything. Now, one thing I wanna talk about safety. We looked at the weight, we looked at the screws, we looked at everything. And we had the vices a certain way. But in looking at all the weight and how the weight was coming down, we're making an adjustment for safety reasons and we're actually flipping the vices upside down so the dead jaw is low. So all the weight will be coming down on the dead jaw. So we'll take all of the vices, we'll flip them upside down, we'll put the dovetail jaws in, then we'll skim the dovetail one more time when everything is assembled so you can run an indicator and it's absolutely perfect. Then we'll take the material, we'll pop it in, we'll lock it down, and then we'll go to town with some crazy tools, making it an incredible part, and we'll teach you guys every facet. Now, before I go, I have an honorable mention for comments. This is from Copsic111, and uh, don't get mad at me, okay? But he states, take two interns, they sit on the table, each holds one side, then you tell them when the chips start hitting your face, squint and you hit the button. I know it's a bad joke, but it's funny. It's funny, come on, come on, it's funny. Now, people look at machinists and all day long you're running machines and there's a bunch of guys in the shop and people always say, you know what? You know what, you ain't a machinist if you don't do this, you don't do that. If you don't have humor, if you don't joke, if you don't have a great attitude, if you don't talk mad smack, I would say then you're not a machinist because that is the breed. That made me laugh and I love joking with my guys every day. That's why I love my job. I joke with my guys, I play with my guys, we make incredible parts, boom. We get to serve our industry, lift up our industry, and even do it standing inside a five axis monster Ibarmia. Stay tuned for the next videos. I'm out, love you guys, boom.